Namaste. Well, I suppose it was bound to happen that in the course of building up our course site community, our Dharmasar uh, study community, that somebody would come in who is suffering from the other worldwide pandemic, that is, Neo Adwaita. The Neo Adwaita infection has been global for over a century. And yet, few people are even aware of it. Or if they are aware of it, they're only aware in terms of their limited sectarian views and like that. Certainly, that was the case with my Adi Guru. He saw anybody who wasn't a devotee of Krishna as being a devotee of Maya. <laughs> That's a bit extreme and fundamentalist view. Um, but it is a fact that there are people who are simply cheaply declaring themselves to be God. And this is nonsense. <laughs> it's nonsense. Huh? It's crazy. Because as soon as you say, let's say a person is, is going to say, I am God, or I am Brahman, or I am Shiva, or something like that. As soon as they say the word, I, they just, they just prove themselves to be a hypocrite. You see? Because Shiva doesn't have an ego. Brahman doesn't have an ego. So as soon as you say, I, it's, no. <laughs> I'll read you a nice quote from Ramana Maharshi from his book of collected talks. With regard to Shiva Vishishtadvaita, that is Shaiva Siddhanta, Sri Bhagavan said, Garudo Hang Bhavana, I am Garuda, conception, does not make a Garuda of a man. All the same, the poisonous effects of snake bite are cured. Similarly, with Shivoham Bhavana, I am Shiva, the conception also. One is not transformed into Shiva, but the ruinous effects of the ego are put an end to. Or, the person retains his individuality but remains pure, that is, fit for constituting a part of the body of Shiva. Becoming so, he can enjoy the supreme bliss. That is liberation, say the Saiva Siddhantis. No, this simply betrays the love of their individuality and is in no way the true experience of liberation. That nails it, doesn't it? See, so one who says, I am God, I am Brahman, I am Shiva, like, or whatever. Uh, this is simply a decoration on their ego. A person who actually achieves the state of Shiva doesn't say anything. They are in a state of complete self-satisfaction. See, just like one who attains the state of aham brahmasmi, it doesn't go around on the street shouting it from the rooftops or claiming it to an audience. That would be the antithesis of aham brahmasmi. <laughs> aham brahmasmi or a or Shivoham is a state. 
where one's consciousness or being becomes similar qualitatively to Shiva or Brahman or Shakti or whatever one is emulating. And this means that one has no ego. One has nothing to prove. One has nothing to show anyone. You see? Because to do so is simply false ego. To do so is simply the uh, false display of so-called sophistication. Huh? But the Greeks had a wonderful word for it, sophomore. <laughs> Sophomoric. Sophos means knowledge, sophistication. Huh? In other words, a high level of development of intelligence. And moros means a moron. <laughs> so a sophomore, huh? there's a good reason why the second year in college is called sophomore. <laughs> they have a little knowledge. But because their knowledge does not span the whole range, they, they make mistakes, stupid mistakes. Mistakes that no actually knowledgeable person would ever make. And from this, ye shall know them. <laughs> For example, let's say somebody claims to be Shiva. Huh? Like in our, in our little school now, there's somebody who, you know, he puts a, a Shiva icon as his avatar and he claims to be Shiva. But can he do any of the things that only Shiva can do? Can he tame a wild bull and ride it? Can he use the Pashupatiastra? Huh? Can he swallow the poison churned from the ocean of milk? Can he do any of the things that only Shiva can do? No. It's ridiculous. Huh? This is just a kid. He doesn't even wear Tripundra. You know, he doesn't know how. He doesn't know why. He doesn't know anything. He's applying as a beginning student. And he's saying on the first day, I am Shiva. <laughs> Come on, get off it. So what really is I am Shiva? Well, I am Shiva comes from when one reaches near the end of the Vivartavada. And of course, the Vivartavada is Raja Yoga, meditation. So when one reaches near the end of this, then he comes into the state of Shiva, where one realizes the complete uselessness of anything dualistic or material. This happens spontaneously. It's not a pose. It's a state. And before one is qualified to even begin the meditative process that leads to this, one has to have extensive qualifications in karma yoga and bhakti yoga. Otherwise, it's just a show. It's just a put on. It's just an ego decoration. It's just a fad, a fashion. Huh? I see this every day in Tiruvannamalai. Thousands of Western tourists come here every winter. Well, they're almost all gone now, of course. It's starting to get nice and warm. <laughs> but when the weather is nice, or what they think is nice, they come. And for a few weeks, they're, they're on vacation, and then they can be Shiva, or they can be Shakti, or they can be Brahman, or they can be whatever they think they, they want. Then they go back home to their jobs <laughs> and, their, and their relationships. I know one guy who claims to be on the, uh, not just Vivartavada, but Ajatavada, right? 
but he's in an emotionally abusive relationship with a woman that he doesn't even love, who is also his boss at work. <laughs> And he wants to say, Aham Brahmasmi? See? I mean, even Ramana Maharshi, who we quoted earlier, who displayed more of the symptoms of Shivoham than just about anybody, except maybe uh, Chandra Shekhar Endra Saraswati in recent times never claimed Shivoham, never claimed to be Shiva, although he demonstrated many of the symptoms of one who has become Shiva, legitimately. But he never claimed it. Why? Because it was genuine. He was a genuine sadhaka. He was the real thing. He had really attained the state of Shiva. So don't let anybody mislead you. Don't let any cheap, easy solution to the problem of self-realization take over your intelligence, uh, actually destroy your intelligence. Self-realization is a lifelong project and one gets to realize the fruits of it only in an advanced age. Huh? Even Ramana Maharshi, after he spontaneously experienced enlightenment at age 16, spent more than 10 years meditating in a cave. Can you do that? Then don't claim to be Shiva. Don't claim to be Brahman. If you're still running around chasing skirts, don't claim to be the purest, the highest. Don't claim to be everything. You're not everything. You're at most a single atom in the, in the little toe of Shiva. <laughs> at most. And in, if that was really the case, you wouldn't brag about it. Because one who brags is full of pride, ego. Huh? And it stinks. Nobody wants to be around a, a person who's full of pride. Look at these politicians. Why does everybody think so little of the politicians today? Because only a person with a huge ego would go into that. Only somebody whose only interest is to prove that they're better than anybody else would take on that terrible burden of being a public person and being subject to criticism from all sides. And that's all they do is fight. So we don't want to fight. We don't want to argue. Now, if somebody likes our view, which if you follow this channel at all, you know this view is based on extensive research in the Shastras and extensive experience in meditation. If you like the view, stick around join our course site and make some real tangible spiritual progress. Otherwise, go away. You know, we don't need this. We don't need anybody coming and having a big ego and making all kinds of crazy claims that they can't substantiate. It just creates a disturbance. And we certainly don't want to argue with such people. Huh? But we say to them, look, you believe whatever you want to believe, but it's not appropriate here. Uh, you should be in quarantine. You have a disease. Uh, you have this global pandemic. And you need to isolate, socially distance, <laughs> at least from us. Uh, so go in peace, brother. But we don't support your claim. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.